right. Welcome back, everyone. This will be my full Halo Episode 1 video. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs to break down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I will be doing videos for all the episodes, depending on how everybody feels about the series just in general, how everyone feels about all the episodes. So careful for spoilers if you have not seen Halo Episode 1 yet. We'll go through scene by scene, talking about Easter eggs, WTF moments. There will be a couple things that I probably will not cover, like the true purpose of the Halo rings, exactly who the Forerunners are, their relationship with the ancient humans, or the progenitors. There is so much to unpack in this first episode. It was basically just a tutorial for people who had never seen Halo before, ever in their lives, or had never played any of the video game series. So the waiting a couple episodes to kind of give you the entire backstory. But the tagline for the series is, win the Halo ring, win the war. So by the finale, the goal will be to find the Halo ring and gain control of it before the Covenant do. The one they believe is the only Halo ring, even though there are several Halo rings around the galaxy. Like I said, the lore goes really deep. But starting with the episode title, episode 1 was titled Contact. It was a reference to Master Chief making contact with the Forerunners, making physical contact and mental contact with the Forerunner artifact, the contact he makes with a human survivor like Quan Ha, the contact that he literally makes with the Covenant elites. The opening scene is the Sands of Madrigal. Madrigal is a planet was referenced in Halo's Myth series, a couple of games including the Contact Harvest, Cole Protocol, Halo 3, ODST. It started out as an Easter egg in the games, actually, but then was made canon when they officially published the Halo Contact Harvest in 2007. The TV show, as you can tell, like they talk about the Master Chief's team, the Silver Team, Silver Time is a reference to the show existing in an alternate timeline of the video game canon. As you can see, they made some changes in the name of practicality and getting on air. This caused it to deviate from established video game canon, so it's being viewed internally as an alternate timeline. For instance, Master Chief is never, or rarely, but essentially never, seen with his helmet off. And he's seen during this episode taking his helmet off. Some of the larger changes you notice when they show the Covenant Assembly at High Charity. High Charity being their mobile planetoid station. It's the reason the United Space Command aren't able to locate them at the beginning of the series, because the Covenant is able to move their base of operations. You only get a brief glimpse of High Charity in this episode, but the Covenant is a collection of alien species held together by their religious belief in the Forerunners. It's a religious war that they think they're fighting. The Colony News broadcast is complaining about Reach seeking to enslave the colonist population. Reach is like the next biggest UNSC occupied world and base next to planet Earth within the inner colonies. All the mobilization you see, all the tech, all the hardware, you see the UNSC Spartans roll out comes from Reach. So Reach is like the powers that be. It's also the birthplace of the Spartan 2 program which produced Master Chief and his fellow Spartans, the Silver Team, here. The place where you see Dr. Catherine Halsey in her lab all the time. The reason the Spartans were created in the first place was because the UNSC wanted their own version of super soldiers, enhanced by biology and mechanical methods. They beef up their bodies while they're young, then they pair them with a superior exoskeleton suit like you see Master Chief and the rest of his team wear. Like he tells Quan Ha, there's no way you're going to be able to fire your way through this. I'll have to take my helmet off before you can fire an actual bullet that'll kill me. There had been a lot of civil war amongst their outer colonies, like the old timer mentions at the card game. His hands were dirty awash in the blood of UNSC Marines. The Spartan program was started because the UNSC needed a quick, effective way of putting down rebellion with as few lives lost as possible, and they were tired of throwing regular Marines at the problem. Thus, various versions of the program were implemented until they got to the Spartan 2 program and you see Master Chief and his team before you. The ironic thing, like you have a surviving colonist, like one surviving colonist from this place here, is that the Spartan 3 program, the successor to the Spartan 2 program, the Master Chief's program, was mostly populated by children of dead colonists because they thought it was cheaper. Catherine Halsey and the UNSC who enabled her experience aren't necessarily viewed as good people, like the actress Natasha McElhon plays her a little ambiguously. Very curious, very determined in the name of science, of progress, but to the detriment of something else. But as you learn, they essentially stole a lot of children that were part of Master Chief's group of kids, experimenting on them, a lot died, some survived the training, to become like Master Chief. Until you get the perfect weapon. The problem that they have at UNSC Command, then, is when Master Chief comes into contact with the Forerunner tech, he finds it and interacts with it, and it sort of scrambles the programming they had built into him. The broadcaster here, Venture Grath, is played by Byrne Gorman, who a bunch of you will recognize from Torchwood or somewhere else recently because he's a fairly popular actor. 
They referenced the Jin Ha character, who's the leader of the rebel insurgency on this Connie opposition force that's standing against the UNSC. Even though he's only in the episode for a couple of minutes, it's really his daughter, Quan Ha, who becomes the more important character. She's one of the newer additions to the narrative. Normally in Halo games, you either take the Master Chief's perspective, like the main Spartan's perspective, or you take the Arbiter or the Covenant's perspective. You only see glimpses of other viewpoints, other storylines that take place concurrently, like the Catherine Halsey storyline or the Flood storyline. You learn about that in snippets and in cutscenes, but you spend all your time in one of those two perspectives. The difference in the TV show is that they'll take a couple different viewpoints. Since this is the first episode, it's mostly just a Halo tutorial, like I said. But they are careful to reference why Madrigal is so important, such a high value colony to the UNSC which they use for all their fuel, all their drugs, powers pretty much everything at this point. They haven't quite learned about Forerunner tech yet. Then the Covenant attacks, looking for what the colonists haven't realized is a local cachet of Forerunner tech. The reason the Covenant forces seek to steal or take or seal off any Forerunner tech from anyone or kill anyone they find using it is because they view it as sacred. Only humanity was deemed by the Forerunners to be worthy of being their successor in the Milky Way galaxy. All the different races of the Covenant evolved without the genetic programming needed to operate Forerunner tech or activate it in any functional way. But they worship it and they worship the Forerunners as gods. They view protecting Forerunner artifacts as their sacred duty. In future episodes, you'll also see that they keep a few humans, one in particular, Maquis, this character here, who they refer to as a reclaimer literally helping them reclaim and activate Forerunner artifacts. Because unlike them, she's a humanoid, which is another big change from the video game series. The special effects that they use for the Sangheli are okay, they could be better. They kind of size them up a little bit to make them seem more brutish, more indestructible next to the regular humans to better show off the Master Chiefs and the Spartans' abilities when they roll in. As they say, the Covenant forces literally think of them as demons, like actual literal demons, because for them, it's religious war. As you can tell, one of the things they worked hardest on was getting the armor video game accurate, along with the weapons as well. The shield recharge is particularly familiar for anyone who's played the game. Everyone, of course, knows John 1117, aka Master Chief, by the side of him. John 1117 was a designation given to him when he was taken from his family as a child, which you see several times in flashbacks throughout the episode. Once he hits the ground, though, and starts killing a bunch of the Covenant forces, then they hit you with the intro title scene, which depicts the Spartan 2 program creation of Master Chief. You see him slowly as they experiment on his body, then they develop the exoskeleton around him. The music has echoes of the classic Halo music, but it's meant to be new. It sounds a little bit more like the classic Halo theme song during the end of the episode. As you see them go around and kill the rest of the colonists, though, the reason the Covenant are here in the first place, the reason why they're trying to kill the colonists, is because they think they've interacted with the Forerunner tech nearby in the Cape, which Master Chief only learns about later. They spot the Type 52 Phantom that the Covenant used for their low-numbers dropships. It's not meant to carry a ton of soldiers, but that's where Master Chief and the Silver Team find the Forerunner tech in the caves. The reason the Forerunner tech activates for Master Chief is because he's human. It would have turned on for any human who had touched it is because Forerunners made it so that humans would eventually be able to find and use their technology for many, many reasons, which I won't get into this video because I don't want it to turn into an hour-long dissertation on the history of the Halo universe. But it triggers a flashback to his repressed childhood memories, something we really don't get in a lot of the games, just hinting at his past before he was abducted by Catherine Halsey in the Spartan 2 program, and he was abducted as a child, like he didn't go with them willingly. Back at Reach, they show the main city and Catherine Halsey's lab as she views the Forerunner tech. The point they're at during this series, Forerunner tech is only a myth to them, but they don't really understand how important it will be to them to utilize it. But Catherine Halsey thinks that this artifact, that this Forerunner artifact, might be the key to them winning their war against the Covenant. That's why she's so interested in it. But at this point, Human Command don't know anything about the Forerunners, the Covenant's relationship with them, the Covenant's relationship with humanity, and the holy war that they feel like they're fighting. The Miranda that they mention is Miranda Keyes within the UNSC forces, who's Catherine Halsey's daughter with her husband, Captain Jacob Keyes, who you meet later in the episode. Obviously, for the purposes of this series, they've been aged down quite a bit. The development she's talking about includes things like cloning and Cortana, which they reveal later. Another piece of classic Halo lore from the games everyone will remember, Cortana is probably the second most important character on the show. Cortana being like the AI intended to be the Spartans' partners in all their endeavors, like a true partner only in digital form. 
The cloning is the questionable morality that I talked about. In order to create Cortana, the AI and all of the other Spartans, she essentially creates flash clones, clones that are grown super fast and harvests their brains when they become mature enough in order to serve as the basis for AI that would become Cortana for Master Chief and for the others. But that's why it's her in the cloning tank. She's creating Cortana based on her own brain for Master Chief. It's just that Cortana will be played by a different character, but it'll be based on her brain. We get a brief look at High Charity, the Covenant's mobile planetoid, and they name the Hierarch here as the High Prophet of Mercy. He's one of the three Hierarchs who reside over the Council that governs all of the actions within the Covenant, who's keeping what looks like a human reclaimer as a pet, so to speak. They're calling her Maquis, but she is a human if that wasn't clear. Because she asked to speak with Master Chief after he activated the Forerunner artifact, they'll probably have the Covenant capture him at some point during the season and he'll learn more about its true purpose and learn about the Halo Ring's true purpose. They show Captain Jacob Keyes, who's much younger than you remember probably during the video game series. They talk about their mutual love of Catherine Halsey despite how she is focused more on her work, how she keeps getting Miranda Keys from getting promoted with any chance of real danger. She eventually does lead her own command when she gets older. The Article 72 twist is to show Human Command is just as bad as Covenant Command is. Is providing this gray area for Master Chief and Cortana eventually to operate in not totally trusting UNSC Command, not totally trusting the Covenant forces either. Quan Ha asking Master Chief if he ever takes the helmet off is a reference to him never taking the helmet off in the video game series, although it does foreshadow him taking it off at the end of the episode, which is one of the stark contrasts to the video game series. Halsey references Cortana by name for the first time, although we probably won't meet her for the first time until episode two. The whole thing with them trying to disable him by disabling the oxygen is just showing what Master Chief is capable of physically. But they show the other Spartans armoring up, preparing to protect him and fight the other Marines if necessary. When they're doing their big silver team suit up montage, the theme song is somewhat similar to the classic Halo theme music, but it's also another way of showing that Halsey is protecting Master Chief because he has the artifact. If he didn't or he hadn't interacted with it, she probably wouldn't be quite as quick to use a silver team to kill regular Marines to protect him. But him touching the artifact triggers the flashback for a second time back to his childhood, reactivates the troop transport, and triggers a reboot cycle for the rest of the fleet on Reach. Halsey's reaction is probably one of the more interested ones. Like she seems more interested and impressed at the sight of what the foreign artifact can do and wants to study it more. I haven't seen episode two yet, but the two of them, Master Chief and Quan Ha, are probably headed for a friendly resupply depot where Master Chief can learn more about the artifact and more about his memories. If you spotted any huge Easter eggs during the episode that I didn't mention during the video, please write them in the comments below. There were a billion things that you could talk about in this video alone. Like we could talk about the true purpose of the Halo Rings. But I will continue doing weekly videos just depending on how this video does and how everybody feels about the series in general. I feel like hardcore fans will be a little upset, like if it's possible to be a little upset that it's not completely canon to the video game series, but hopefully they do have some fun with the rest of the episodes. There's at least potential here for it to be a really fun series. They have renewed it for season two as we're speaking right now. But my Moon Knight episodes will start next week after they start releasing them, so be sure to enable alerts for my channel to be the first to watch them. Click here for my new Marvel Secret Invasion announcement and click here for my Moon Knight Episode 1 trailer video and Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.